Good morning, everybody. It is currently the 10th of June, 2011, and still a fairly active day out there here in the Western Pacific. Still watching uh, now Tropical Storm Sarika, or uh, Dodong here from the uh, Philippines, or Pegasus, calling that. Now a Tropical Storm as of 21 Zulu here, or approximately 0. 600 India, or about 500 Philippines standard time. Uh, current winds out of it are 35, gusting up to 45 knots. Both JMA and uh, JTWC, both in agreement on the those max winds. Also, JMA has central pressure of the system down to 1,000 HPA now, but still not a very deep system. And also noting it's not really going to gain strength too much now. Uh, JTWC does have it maxing out right around 45, gusting up to 55 knots as it makes landfall just northeast of Hong Kong, right around the Chantal area here. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, expecting to make landfall overnight tonight as a tropical storm, though. And I'm already noting on this water vapor imagery, a lot of wind shear already taking its toll on the northern periphery of this system. Southern periphery does still have a lot of convection here, water vapor imagery really just showing the upper levels of the atmosphere. But looking at the visible imagery enhanced in here with some IR, you still see some banding here uh, with these low-level clouds just to the northern periphery, but most of the higher cloud tops definitely knocked down here from that vertical wind shear on the northern periphery. So just looking at the current position of the storm, all the uh, convection is associated in the southern periphery where you do have a very good uh, upper-level outflow in the southern portion of the uh, storm. But as I already noted, though, yesterday really have seeing about 30 to 40 knots of wind shear here along southeastern China. And that's really going to create a massive toll on this system and just showing the streamline here coming in from the north. So really just seeing that wind shear kind of knock off on the northern periphery of the system. And that's why you're seeing all the convection downstream as it's really kind of knocking this warm core low off towards the side. So expecting this to continue to track off to north, gradually intensifying up to 45 knots, mainly due to that good outflow coming in from the southern portion of the system. And looking at the uh, streamline analysis here, just showing the overall background flow along the western periphery of the subtropical ridge out in this region, expecting this to gradually move off towards the north, as already noted in the landfall around the Shantou region here, just northeast of uh, Hong Kong, west of the Taiwan Strait, expecting a very light landfall though uh, here in China, not expecting too much winds out of this, and I think the a largest problematic uh, factor of this system will be the precipitation as it starts to get combined up with an area of low pressure starting to develop here just off of south southeastern China, just north of Hong Kong, we're starting to see a low there, all this positive vorticity associated with it here in red. And as it can combined up with that, you're going to see an increase of precipitation across much of southeastern China here, and even all toward the Ryukyu Islands as this basically shoots off towards the east with this overall flow here. Thus, my uh, actually really crude graphical uh, thoughts on this system. Uh, just expecting to track due north, then eventually recurving off towards the northeast, as already noted here, making that light landfall here. I say light landfall because I only expect it just to skirt the coast of uh, China here. And really, by the time it gets up in here, it is going to get combined with all this area of cloudiness or that area of low pressure, as I already said, that is starting to develop here off of the uh, bayou stationary front that's actually causing the rainy season up in this region here. So landfall AM on the 11th, but really just the major factor here is just going to be the high amount of precipitation. Also noted actually on this uh, satellite imagery here is this uh, troughing right down in here south of Guam. That is still not Invest 93W down here. Uh, really a lot more disorganized than it was uh, yesterday and the day prior, but still continuing to watch it here as there is still the potential of uh, some tropical development as it continues to track off here towards the Yap in the coming days. So we actually saw the same thing with uh, this storm up in here. We watched it for about a week as it crossed the Philippines and finally started to develop here on the west side of the PI. So just want to continue continue to keep our eyes on this system. And here showing JMA's uh, forecast on Tropical Storm Sarika, making that landfall actually a little bit farther towards the east than what JTWC is showing, and I would actually agree more with these guys because uh, just because of the uh, stationary front coming in or that developing low coming in, really going to, you know, towards the northeast as JTWC is actually showing here on the right. Uh, Hong Kong Observatory also warning on the system, really just taking it to the northwest, just east of the city there, and they're really not showing that recurvature, mainly probably because because they're just expecting it to dissolve out here as that area of low pressure moves across the region and really just kind of takes care of it. Uh, either way, though, both of these warnings kind of an agreement of a closest proximity to uh, Hong Kong at a pretty, pretty much between 100 and 130 nautical miles before it begins to uh, make landfall and shoots off towards the northeast, and you see a rapid de-intensification of the system afterwards. But JMA really the farthest outlier towards the east here, while uh, Hong Kong remains a little bit towards the west still. still 
still between the three agencies expecting a landfall between Chantal and somewhere just east of Hong Kong up in here. I would actually personally myself more, lean more towards what JMA is calling on it. And also moving on to the rest of the Western Pacific here, as already noted, this developing low over China is going to track off towards the northeast here along the stationary front, uh, the rainy season stationary front out here. So this is actually looking on the afternoon of the 11th, approximately 06 Zulu. That low is going to dominate much of southeastern Japan here from Kyushu all the way up towards the Kanto Plain. So looking at precipitation here much of Saturday night into Sunday throughout Japan. So sorry about the uh, wet weekend, everybody. It looks like that's really going to be the case. So otherwise across the... Uh, much of the western pacific uh, thailand continuing to see some precipitation down here associated with the southwest monsoon and also the philippines uh, some of these easterly waves tracking across here could increase the precipitation down here in Visayas and ben mindanao but also i already noted earlier we're still watching invest 93 down in here still southwest of guam uh, here on no gaps actually really uh, very disorganized down in here but we're going to continue to watch them maybe they're not really quite picking up on it at this time but if we go a little bit farther down the forecasted track period actually to the 15th in the evening time here, uh, just showing this Invest uh, 93W finally getting picked up here by No Gaps, just north of Palau and east of the Philippines here, uh, really about the same track as Typhoon Songa took if it does uh, take this uh, course of action here as uh, No Gaps is picking up on. So we're going to continue to watch that Invest here in the coming days. And moving south to Australia, looking at your, your weekend outlook here, actually today in Cairns, looking at some isolated thunderstorms there, seeing some precipitation haven't seen in a little while, it's all due to an upper level of disturbance that's actually Actually, right off the northeast coast of Queensland. It could affect Cairns but today, but as far as Brisbane today, looking at sunny skies, by tomorrow it could track a little bit farther through the southeast and create some PM showers tomorrow down a little bit farther towards the south in Brisbane by tomorrow night as well. So looking at those rain showers with temperatures actually in the teens as well. So a little bit cooler out there. And just showing this area of precipitation here on GFS's model, just this little uh, green blob up in here. If we actually scroll down, we do start to see it track off towards the southeast by tomorrow, just showing that higher precipitation precipitation down here around the uh, Brisbane area. It's all tracking along the uh, northeastern periphery of the uh, high pressure down here, the Australian high, which is kind of lingering along southern Australia right now. So all this precipitation kind of giving that give way to move a little bit farther towards the southeast. But that is all for Australian weather update, otherwise fair weather across much of the country. And speaking of actually down in Australia, one of my uh, friends down in there actually has some really good footage of a solar uh, mass injection down here going on, or a massive prominence eruption as he quoted on his video here. And uh, you can actually look at that in the link down here to the bottom right. Actually, I do encourage to go, people to go check it out as it's a really some uh, great footage of our sun out here and some uh, high activity going on. But that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for listening to WesternPacificWeather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can always post them in the comment box below if you're watching this here at YouTube. Or you can email me here at WestpacWeather at gmail.com. So thanks again, everybody. I hope you stay safe, uh, continuing to watch the storm out here. And uh, have a great day. And have a great weekend as well. Bye.